Hey what's up everyone I am Ismaqan and welcome to my YouTube channel so in this particular video we will be checking out the effective ways how error management we can do inside flutter applications so we'll talk about different types of errors and how to catch them inside the flutter so it can be either client side errors it can be from back end it can be in parsing and it can be either from the network connectivity issue as well so we'll catch all of them and how effectively we can catch that and also how effectively we can log those errors as well so we'll talk about all of that but first if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do that as it will really help the channel out just go to my channel and click the subscribe button there are a lot of interesting videos that you can watch as well that i'm pretty sure that you like so with that being said let's start with our today's video all right then so let me open up the android studio project and let's continue forward with that so here you can see that i've already made one flutter project that is weather app error handling so basically what i have added till now i'll just explain as well so inside the main dot dot you can see that we are just navigating to our home page so we have our home page ui so inside the folder structure you can see that we have data sources models utils and views so inside the data sources i've added the weather api just this fetch current weather api and we are using the do package for that that's it nothing else we are doing inside our data source as well next i have made a weather model which has the time interval temperature and other information that we are uh, required from the weather api so if i go to the r browser as well and let me open up the weather api now here you can see that the api has time interval temperature and wind speed so that is what we are capturing from this api as you can see as well inside our from json method so that we can show it in, inside our flutter app next we have our utils which i'll talk about just in a moment and next we have our views folder where i have made our home page so inside our home page we are having a weather model and is api loaded getter as well so if the weather is not equals to null that means that our api is loaded so if the api is loaded that time we are showing the time temperature wind speed otherwise we will show a loading progress indicator so inside the init state i am calling the weather manager which is inside the utils as you can see and we are calling the fetch current weather we are passing the latitude and longitude statically and then we are getting the response now generally what we do is we are checking if the state code of the api is 200 that means we are getting the api response and we can just pass that inside the from json and then we can call the set state to rebuild the ui and then we'll show our data right here inside the application so if i hot restart you can see that it will load and after that our data will reflect in the app as well now the problem with this particular approach right now is as you can see the error handling is not proper here we are not checking any try catch or we are not handling from the api if we are getting a response or if we are getting any sort of error if we are getting an error what type of error is that and how we have to properly log that as well so let's just quickly fix that issue now so the first step here that we have to do is to add the dart z package so what we'll do is let's just go to the pubspec yaml and here we'll add a dependency that is dart z package pub get we can run this is the particular package that we'll be using and basically we'll be using the either which can be used for the error handling perfect so once the package is added what we are go going to do is we are going to create our error handler class 
So inside error handler folder, I'm going to create a new file error handler. And inside that we are going to create a class. So we will create a error handler class. We will first make our static method that will be call API, which will be of a generic type. So I'll mention a T here and it will take two things so that we'll add as well. So first of all, it will take the future function we'll make. So this method will return a future of HTTP response. And the name of that we can pass it as repository connect. Second one, what we have here is function as well, which will return the generic type and function we can create. This method will accept a dynamic value and this I will call it as repository parse. Perfect. So that's what we'll be accepting in this call API method. I'll rename this repository connect to API and this repository parse to parse. And inside that first I'll create a try catch block. Okay. Inside the try block, what we are going to do is that first we are going to get the response from our API. So we are going to call the await and then call our API method. Now this response we are getting as our HTTP response. And here first I'll change this HTTP response to response because that class we have inside our DO package. So here we'll just import that. So we'll be getting our response. Now inside the try block, what we are doing is we are getting the response. We are calling our API and we are getting the response back. And based on the status code, whatever status code that we'll get here, based on that, we'll be returning. So if the case is 200, that time I can simply return write and we can return parse response dot data. Okay. And the return type of this call API, we have to specify as well. So it will return a future because it is a asynchronous method. And inside the future, it will return either type, which will either have a error state or it can have a successful return state. So we specify our error state here. And otherwise we, our success is the variable type of T. So our generic type, we will return otherwise. Now here, this either I'll just import our dot Z package. Now this error state we'll make using our error state dot dot file and this write we are returning. Now if there is any error here, so I'll just catch that as well. And then we'll simply return our left side that will be a error. So here we can return our error. So what I'm going to do is first, let's just make our error state so that we can catch and return all of those errors here as well. So inside our error state, first, I'm going to create a sealed class for the error state and it will be of generic type as well. So I'll mention T here. Then inside that we'll be having exception. So final exception and first one will be our client error. So client error basically means that if we have any client side error or if there is any issue from the mobile, that time we'll raise the client error. Next issue that we'll be having is a parse error. So if the issue is in JSON parsing from the client, that time we'll return the parse error. 
next if we have any type of uh, http issue from the api that time we will call the http error we will return that and if we have a network issue if the phone does not have internet or if it is not working that time will return a network error so all of these error i am going to add inside my error state and that is a sealed class now sealed class is like a abstract class in dart but the class cannot be used outside of the particular library or that dart file that we have made we can utilize that only inside so next what we are going to do is i'm going to extend these and make our classes for different types of errors so first one that we are going to make is our data client error so class will create a data client error and it will be of type generic type which will extend our error state perfect and here also we'll mention the generic type for the t now constructor we can make for the data client error so i'm just going to pass that and here we are going to pass our exception for and i'm going to name it as error next we are going to call our super method which is basically from our er error state and now we can pass our error whatever we are capturing inside our data client error and here i have a error type of client error so i'm going to just pass client error here now the issue is that the parameters that i've added is not named parameters so i'm just going to wrap that in curly brackets and that will solve the issue now likewise i'm going to make all of our error classes as well so next one will be our data network error and here we are going to pass our network error instead next one we are going to make our data http error so data http error and here also we'll pass our http error okay and next one we'll be having is our data parse error so i'm just going to pass data parse error and now we'll return our parse error perfect now here if it is a http issue then we'll return a, a then we will get a http exception instead and if it is a network issue we'll get a network exception okay now these network exception and http exception it is basically coming from a enum so what we'll do is inside utils i'm going to create a file known as enums.dart and inside that we'll create a enum for our network exception so network exception can be handled if we have no internet connection if we have timeout error or if the error is unknown likewise i'll make another enum for our http exception these http exceptions are coming from the api so if we are getting if we are catching any api issues then we'll call our http exception instead so here it can be unauthorized so for example if the api key that we are passing or if the api token that we are passing is coming as unauthorized from the api that means that we'll return our http exception as unauthorized next it can be a internal server error in as well so if we have a backend api issue if we have a error inside the api that time we can call our internal server error as well otherwise unknown we'll make okay 
now format we can do and once we have made that i can simply import our network exception and http exceptions enum that will work as well next this is a http exception so i'm just going to create a http exception here and next we have this as a network exception so i'm just going to change this to network exception awesome so our error state is done now what we'll do is we'll make a part of so part and here i'll write error state dot dot so that will include that will make error state as a part or uh, inside the error handler and inside error state i'll create it as a part of error handler dot dot okay next this enum i'm going to take it out from here and put it inside the error handler so that will solve the error state issue perfect so now we can have our error state as well next now we need to return our errors otherwise we have to return so if the status code is 200 and if we are having another try catch block so if we are unable to pass that that time it means that it is a client or sorry it is a pass issue so we will simply return our data pass error this time and here i can just return e dot to string okay so here we are returning the data parse error and i am returning the error as a exception perfect so this is done next what we will do likewise we will make for different status codes as well so for example if the case is 401 that means that it is a unauthorized api so i'm going to simply return so I'm going to copy this line and paste it right here and I'm going to return it as a data HTTP error and here I'm going to return it as a HTTP exception dot and it will be a unauthorized API if it is a 401 if the case is a 500 that means that it is an internal server error inside the api so we can return internal server instead perfect now this is for our status code only and if we have a default so we'll make a default case as well if we have another status code here that time also i am going to return a left with a data http error as unknown perfect so this is done with our status codes next what we are going to do is here inside our catch block we are going to make it as on do exception and we are going to get the error so here first things we are going to add is a return switch case we will add here as well based on the exception type So here inside our switch case, what we are going to do is we are going to have different type of DO exception types. So if the DO exception type dot is receive timeout, that time will return a left of data network error data network error and here we can pass the network exception dot timeout error okay so that is done as well so here now you can see that we are catching if it is a json parse error 
if it is a http error of unauthorized api if it is an api issue if it is a timeout issue when the network is not working properly or if it is a unknown we are capturing that as well and we have multiple error state for the client error parse error http error and network error as well next what we can do is we can add this call api to our weather manager so here you can see that inside utils we've added our weather manager as well which is just calling our api from our data source so what we are going to do here is i'm just going to go and here i'm going to call our error handler dot and we'll call our static method call api first parameter i'm going to pass it as a function that will be nothing but our api and the second one we are getting our result that we can pass and return back and here whatever response that we'll be getting i can just call await and i can return that right away perfect so if i go inside the fetch current weather so the serialization part also will remove from our views so i'm going to take this out from here as well and this fetch current weather will return a uh, either type so now i'm going to change it and here i'm going to return a error state or it can be of type weather model right and i'm going to import the dart z package as well cool so now from here i can simply get the result and parse it from our response dot data so we'll be getting our result and pass that inside our from json method and here i can return this weather model so you can see that the error is gone as well so now what we have done is we have wrapped our fetch current weather with a error handler call api method which will capture all of the errors for us so now in the fetch current weather what we simply have to do we'll get our result so based on this result i can result dot fold and if it is left or right we can get the error as well so if it is left that means that we've got any type of error and if it is right that means we've got our weather model so here if it is right i'm going to call our weather is equals to r and assign that and then call our set state method otherwise inside the left side i am not going to do anything for now next what we can do is inside our error state you can see that we have multiple types of error but we are not having any logs here crucial part while capturing any error is that we have to maintain our logging as well so what we can do is whenever a constructor is called we can also pass and call the method here and then log whatever type of error we are getting so for example for a data client error i can log something like this inside error i can pass the error developer i can import library client error captured like that and likewise i can just copy this and paste it in the network error as well here i can make it as data network error network error captured likewise we can make a http error as well and a parse error as well so the parse error will have unable to parse the json unable to parse the json 
and the data HTTP error is that a HTTP error captured. That's it. So what that will do is it will log the error. So we are passing our errors as well. So whenever any type of error is captured, we'll get our logs and what and where the error is captured. So that is done as well. So next, let's just open up the emulator. And now I can just hot restart the application once. Now you can see that the API is still calling perfectly fine. So basically what's happening is if I go in the run tab as well, you can see that I'm not capturing any errors at this moment. But for example, if any of the time, if I go inside my data source and I change the, or we have a spelling mistake and the API is no longer working. If I hot restart now, you would be able to see that I'm getting a network error captured and we are getting a unknown type of network error. So that's how we can capture different types of errors. Now, for example, if I am having a API write and here the way we are parsing the data. So now if instead of time, I added minutes. So many of the times the API properties that we have inside that can be changed. So that time if I hot restart, you can see that I am getting a data parse error, unable to parse the JSON. Null is not a subtype of type string. So I have to check my parsing model and the values that I am passing. And because here minute is not there in the JSON, I have to check that and I have to change it back to time then I can restart and then I won't be facing any errors. You can see no errors are here and I'm getting the API perfectly. Last thing that we can do here is to capture if we have internet network as well or not. So inside our error handler here inside, if we are getting a DO exception, we can check if await is connected. So if we are connected with the API, we can check that. And if we are not connected, or if we do not have internet, that means that we can simply return left because we are capturing an error. And it will be of type data network error. Here I can return of type network exception and I can return no internet connection. Perfect. So now this is connected method we can make. So inside that only I'm going to create a method. So static, it will return a future of Boolean. We'll name it as underscore is connected. Async I'll add and inside the method, we are going to return a connectivity result. So we'll be getting a result basically. And I'm going to await connectivity class we can call and then we can call the method check connectivity inside that. So basically this class that we have is not inside flutter. We'll be using a package for that. That is connectivity plus package. So we can just add that as well. Connectivity plus package pubget we can run for that and it will just add those dependencies required. So the package is added. Next we can go inside our error handler and now we can see that I can import the class and now from this return, I can return that if result not equals to connectivity result dot none. If it is not equals to none, that means we are connected with either mobile data, internet, Wi-Fi, whatever it is. So we are checking if we have internet or not. So if I hot restart, 
there we go so you can see that i am getting a data network error captured and it is of type no internet that means that we do not have a internet and after that if i go here, here and i can open the mobile data and wi-fi and if i click on done and if i hot restart it once again i should be able to get the api and now you can see it is working so that is how we can capture different types of errors it can be from backend it can be while parsing it can be from the internet or if it can be if the api did not went through so that is how we can catch different types of errors so all of the source code for the error handling is available on github so you can check it out from the description box below as well so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you do please like the video subscribe to my channel and if you have any doubts then comment them below as well and i'll definitely come back on that